Hi, I'm Chris, and I'm a new bike owner. Well, actually two, two bikes. I'm a dual bike owner. Put all the wheels together, it'd be like a car. We're not off track at all here. And I don't want to forget, huge thanks to Shopify for sponsoring today's episode. So when you become 1.75 bikes, when you become a YouTuber of my size, about 200 pounds, brands often email us to review their products. Once in a while, a brand will offer to send something for a review that is downright irresistible. It's a little heavier than the other one. <laughs> this guy, the Ad Motor, the Ad Motor Hero Tan M65X. Ad Motor reached out to me and said, Chris, would you like to review any of our bikes that, that we produce? And so I said yes, under one condition. This is not just some flimsy review channel while we were agree to anything for cool stuff in exchange. This is BS for Build. So I said, here's the deal. I will review your bike, but it has to go up against a top-notch competitor, a high-level challenger in the market. The bike I had in my basement since I didn't go to college. Did I mention the Hero Tan is an electric bike? And currently, this bike right here is not an electric bike yet. Anyways, well, as I was saying, yes, top-notch competitor. My bike hasn't been used in 10 years since sports cars were invented against the Hero Tan MX65X. A bike face-off answering one of the questions of the ages. Can Be Is For Build in one day build a bike powered by Harbor Freight drills that will compete with a $2,000 e-bike? Let the games begin. So when building something to compete with something else, it's really good to know what they're gonna be judged upon. I wanna do this purely off of what I would use an e-bike for. You at home can watch the results of both of these and make up your mind yourself. I would use an e-bike for being silly and going fast, so I'm thinking top speed, and short runs to the grocery store or a uh, bar or a restaurant in good weather. So that's how we're gonna be judging this competition. We're gonna be keeping that in mind while building out our drill-powered bike. It's time to get to building. I wish I had one of those fancy bike stand things, but I don't. So here's the deal. We gotta find a way to power this bike with a couple of these drills. Thank you, Harbor Freight. I have ordered on Amazon some sprockets that will need to get in line with the, the chain, either on top or on the bottom. And the goal is to achieve dual drill power. So one of the bigger issues real estate wise is I need the pedals to stay on the bike because the other bike has pedals. So I'd like to keep the pedals. And I have just realized something. Drills don't freewheel. They go, they stop. If you try and go it without the drill trigger being pushed down, very unhappy. Backwards, very unhappy. Forwards, very unhappy. It only wants to go when told to go. Meaning, I could leave pedals, lose real estate, but if I hit these pedals, I risk hurting the drills, and that's our power source. So as I'm filming this, we're doing some on-the-fly design changes. Pedals gotta go. So we're gonna cut the pedals off here and here. I'll have to build some pegs for my feet to rest somewhere around here. And then we gotta figure out how we're gonna get the drills on the bike. Let us begin. Well, we just took that point of no return and hopped right over it. I went ahead and loosened this uh, back nut off of the rear axle. This is one of the mounting points that I think are good, is a good uh, potential to get some steel on here and then I'll tighten the nut back down over it and that'll get, I'm, gonna, I'm thinking three mounting points to hopefully triangulate some sort of a, a really stiff thing that can hold the drill. So I'm thinking here, somewhere along here, I'm not sure if it's gonna be here or here, and then here as well. So I'm gonna need to, uh, Build some sort of a plate here out of steel, drill a hole in it, get that plate bolted back onto here. Then I'm gonna need to find a way to be able to pinch these tubes. I gotta be careful when I'm pinching them. These are aluminum, lightweight aluminum bike here. Um, if I pinch it too much, I will just crush it. So I gotta come up with some way to um, pinch it gently, but firmly. And, uh, and then once we have three fixed points on the bike, we can start uh, designing and building our, our mounting concept for the drills to have them hang out I've, I forgot where we decided that they're gonna hang out, but now that there's not pedals, uh, the world is our oyster. We can be over here, we could be down here. Uh, there's a lot more potential. The rear 
mounting steel welding surface has been attachified. Now, we're gonna move on to how are we gonna hang on to these aluminum pieces, and I kind of gave it away right here. Uh, by the way, yeah, I'm just gonna use scraps for this whole project. Um, we're working on some real work uh, in the background that is producing a lot of, a lot of good steel scrap, so I'll be using that. The game plan is to do a kind of just really basic flat pinch setup here, so I'm gonna try and bend a U shape into this very overly thick steel flat bar. Um, that'll go around one side, the other side will be flat. We'll put two holes in it, nut and bolt on each side. It'll give us a small but sturdy weldable surface. We've attached our little squeezy pancake plates onto the bike. They're just hand tight. They can be moved around right now. And that is our three mounting surfaces. Triangles are strong. That's important to remember when you're engineering nonsense as we are today. Now, let's talk about power sources. Would not be a drill powered bike if we didn't power it with a drill. Now we have this great relationship with Harbor Freight where they send us tons of tools to use in the shop, to use on the show, stuff like that. Not exactly to build bikes with, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. I had initially expected to use our old drills. These are, I'm, I'm guessing these are not brushless because it doesn't say brushless on the back. And when the brushless ones came out, they sent us these brand new ones. Uh, we probably got two of these in the beginning when they sent them out to us. And I think one is probably on a job site somewhere, maybe under a boat, not under a boat, in an engine compartment of a boat would be my guess. Anyway, so I was gonna use these, but I don't have a matching pair. So we're on to our brand new nice brushless motor. Sorry, Arbor Freight. Now, how are we gonna attach it to the bike? I'm looking at this drill and I'm thinking we, so we have to attach the head in a very, very strong and sturdy way because off the head of the drill, you know, this section of the drill right here, we're gonna run a sprocket in some way shape or form and it has to be very sturdy and rotate very perfectly so it doesn't skip off the chain cause problems with the chain so i'm looking at the widest part on the sides here and it looks like it's that bumper there and this bumper here so i want to hold on to this with a piece of angle iron running along here and along here and then i can use a hose clamp and hose clamp it on really really strong is my hope then we'll have to build something that kind of comes down and holds around the handle the handle is a little bit less important, but still important to keep a hold of. Now I had originally thought about running one drill down here somewhere and one up here somewhere, but now that we've got rid of the pedals, it really looks like we could do like a dual, dual drill kind of here and here maybe, which I think would look cooler. So first things first though, we need to figure out how we're going to hold on to the drill with metal. Then we can figure out how we're going to build from here to hold it where we need to hold it. So. I'm gonna cut out some angle iron, grab some scraps, see what we can do to hang on tight to this bad boy. Well, Harbor Freight, I think, I think your drills are dressed up as TIE Fighters for Halloween. This is pretty cool. So we've got them encased in metal. This is just our metal casing that's gonna hold the drill in place really, really well. Uh, hose clamped on to our angle iron. This piece needs to be welded so it'll all be incorporated, but it feels really, really solid and there's no wiggle. So the next thing is, is okay, the drill is gonna drive a sprocket. Here's the sprocket that I used internal guestification math to think that this is gonna get us going fast enough. I hope it does. So we need a way to get this to be attached to the drill, perfectly centered and spin, and rotate without without wobbling. So I, well, there goes that one. I, uh, I just walked around the shop a lot until I found something that shoved inside its hole very well, nice and tight. And uh, that way it would keep itself centered. And uh, these quarter inch little drill attachment things really did the trick. So they'll chuck in real nice. They got the flat edges that'll chuck in well. 
and these things will keep itself uh, centered because it's a nice press fit. There's enough pressure on all sides. It'll be nice and centered. So I'm just gonna run a bead of weld around the bottom of those, weld up this guy on the side here, and then we're ready to uh, walk it over to the bike and start figuring out where that sprocket is gonna land on our chain and where that puts our drill and how we then attach the drill to all this stuff. Well guys, I really wanted to run dual drill power, but we're having throttle problems. So I got things like mocked up in a temporary fitment just to test stuff out. Like I said, the drills don't have a free spool method. So you can imagine if this one's spinning, the other one has to spin at the exact same speed or it gets really mad. So if I can one hand both of these throttles, you'll see that as I start to work them, um, one's either skipping over there. If I get them both at full throttle, I just peg it, it's good. Probably, I don't know, might have been skipping. But as we're trying to do low, low speed stuff, one's just fight, fighting the other and it's really gonna be, it would probably be a lot of messing with the throttle. So I think what the right move to do is just test right now what one drill power will do and see if that'll help us, see if that's enough to maybe right off the bat that'll have us reach our goal of, of what the Hero Tan M65X can do. Maybe one drill power is enough, I don't know. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the welds for this second drill off. We're gonna run with this lower drill because I, I think I got it on there better. I'm gonna support it, triangulate it, all the supports and everything and just pretty much build it out and we'll see what one drill power can do. Well, I hate to say it, but uh, version one of the drill bike is an absolute failure. Here's the reason why. A lot of you guys probably saw this coming. I kind of saw this coming too. thought I was gonna be able to work around it. There's not enough chain wrapping around our sprocket here. That's why, for instance, like in an auxiliary drive in a car, don't mind this car, and the engine's not here, but you know how they, they wrap all the way around a pulley and then go back up and around and down and under another pulley, and then that way they can wrap around another pulley and stuff like that. It's because if you don't have enough surface area on the sprocket here, it's just too easy to skip a gear. Let me show you the amount of force it takes to skip skip a tooth here. If I go that way, I can do it. I can do it with my pinky. It's just way too easy to skip a tooth. So when I apply any force to the drill, uh, it just starts skipping the teeth with me sitting on the bike. Like it's just way, way, way too easy. So we need to have this chain wrapping all the way around our sprocket, which means that since we have to have this hub, because this is our only freewheeling spot to allow it to coast without having the drill on at all times, we gotta have the hub back here. That kind of means all this stuff that we did right here, unless we could find a way to wrap the chain all the way around here, which uh, we can't, it's worthless. So we're gonna just start moving over to this area here and be happy we already have another drill prepared to be welded into the bike. Yeah, I mean, since we already don't have pedals, we might as well not have the main sprocket either. Put the drill there, that way the chain can wrap around it. Luckily, this is an adjustable length chain, so I can do that. So I've never taken apart one of these assemblies before. I'm gonna have to figure out how. I'm hoping there's some steel in here that we might be able to weld another plate to. We'll start hopefully with a plate and then be able to arrange our drill placement from there. That's the goal at least. Well, I was, I was going to take this thing apart. I hit it with the impact and started making the wheel spin really, really fast. And then I thought, well, we're really trying to just test a drill power here. And we, we don't know what size sprocket is perfect. Maybe I should just get a drill onto here using this 
perfectly. So cool thing about this is if we're into here and we're in here, the drill's on there, we don't have to worry about it skipping toots on the sprocket or anything like that. We can just spin this whole, we can spin this whole unit. Now this sprocket is really big. It's gonna, re it's gonna take a lot more torque from the drill. It's gonna be demanding way, way, way more torque and it's gonna give us a much higher top speed if the drill has the power. So much more teeth on that than, you know, this that we were testing with, right? But I think it's worth a test. It was a nice thought, but this thing, the sprocket is way too big. This thing just puts it on a mega turbo speed and the drill, the drill kind of uh, taps out. It like, it maxes out and uh, it shuts off. So that ain't gonna happen, but I am gonna keep exploring the idea of mounting our sprocket to this in some way and using this. Well, I gotta say guys, this thing is putting up a fight. So here's what I learned. I, I went ahead and I removed the crank, I removed that crank sprocket and got this thing down and I started started wrapping chain around this. I gotta like weld it on to our, our crank crank chain thing, crank sprocket. And you can see that the, the chain won't line up on this guy at any point. I can get about two rings on it, but then you go and it wants to start skipping and coming off one. So that might've been why we had skippage too, is basically our sprocket. It's not the right size. I ordered this one as well. It's not the right size either. You know, I know a sprocket that will be the right size. It's down here on the other side of the wheel. So I'm gonna take this off while I'm down there. I'm gonna take that off and I'm gonna see if it's possible to borrow that sprocket and maybe do something cool with it. Speaking of buying things for this build, you guys know where you buy a lot of things and where I've sold a lot of things? Awesome segue, Chris. I know, thank you. Shopify, our sponsor for today's episode. Shopify is an easy to use, all-in-one commerce platform for people of any skill and technical level. It gives you the ability to start, to grow, and to expand your business. A mere seven and a half years ago, young Chris was a software engineer and I decided to start selling merch to support B is for Build. And I opened up my first shop on Shopify. 
We still sell on Shopify to this day. At the time, I was a senior software engineer with a specialty in front-end development, cross-platform integration. I was basically making things like Shopify. So why did I then go buy Shopify? Well, because even for someone in my shoes, the answer is simple. Shopify is the best product out there. My personal favorite parts of it are the uh, different themes that they have available so you can easily change the styling and get a really, really good professional look on your site very easily. It's cross-browser compatible, so it's gonna look right on a Mac, on a PC, on an Android phone, on a Apple phone. It just looks right across the board. Shopify also lets you sell online or in person across all major social media platforms, but selling in person is a really cool thing. So if I go to an event, I can sell merch in person, go to a Saturday market, go to a car show. You can do commerce in person on the platform and have it all right there. And that's why it powers more entrepreneurs than anywhere else. With their admin section, it makes administration an absolute breeze. You can track your orders, your fulfillments, sales, views on the site, all sorts of good stuff. It's absolutely amazing. So as you can tell, I'm a big fan of the product. I think you're gonna like it too. So guys, head to the link in my description. It's on the screen right here, shopify.com slash B is for build for a free trial. Huge thanks to Shopify for sponsoring this episode. Let's get back to it. Well, it's looking good, but there's one small, small issue. So that's, that's actual drivetrain stuff, but it's jumping off the drill. And I was wondering, why is the chain jumping off the drill? We're doing pretty good with tension and everything. And then you look at the drill alignment and I think this will show up on camera. It ain't, it ain't straight. So unfortunately, this is the second time I've done this on this project. During the full weld out, when you weld, the metal expands because it gets very hot, and then when it cools, it contracts, and it, it just it, it cranked itself while I was welding this thing out. So it's like the stage where you have it tacked together, it all looks good, and that's when it's easy to change, and then you go to fully weld it out, and then it's like, oh, dang. Now it's really hard to change, but I gotta change it. So. I've got a lot of a lot of supports going on in here. I mean, this thing is supported by every single angle. Again, triangles are strong, right? So I'm just gonna have to cut through like almost every single one of these supports. I'm gonna leave one of the bars uh, solid. That's gonna be this piece right here that'll give me a uh, pivoting point to be able to bend it and then start welding things back together. Um, and I'm gonna try and keep a much better focus on the straightness of this guy. And then we will be able to test if this thing's gonna work or not. Still have no idea if this thing's gonna function. of the B is for Build Drill Bike version three. Um, I've fashioned this uh, piece of garbage off the ground to the, uh, the trigger on a zip tie to see if I can apply a little bit of throttle. And, um, I haven't built any pegs for my feet yet, so we're gonna have to see how this goes. Hey, we're going. We're moving. It seems like there may be a bit of a, a torque shut off. It might, there might be a problem or it might not be. It really seems like once you get going a little bit, it's not an issue, but it might be an issue at the, at the jump. I'm gonna fully weld this thing out and uh, I'm gonna build a throttle and that will allow us to do more uh, testing. I think it's I think it's gonna go. I think it's gonna go.
These two bikes are ready to go head to head. So we went ahead and put, I did a brake powered, well brake lever powered. Nope, you know what? Nobody said these have to be brake levers. There's a lever right here. This is my throttle. It runs through a uh, standard, uh, well, I'm gonna go against what I said earlier and just call it a brake cable. We don't, I don't know what these cables are called. Anyways, runs through here, limits, stops here. I had a little screw on stop that I invented here to, to grab onto the cable and then it's zip tied to the um, trigger of the drill. So, if we wanna give it a little test here. Plenty, plenty of wheel speed to go around. Gave it a tiny little test outside. It is working and functioning as a drill bike, single speed drill bike. So it's ready to go head to head. Let's get these things out into the field where we can test them properly. Kyle was supposed to be here helping me film this today. We're gonna go on a bike ride together and then he got on a plane and flew off to Thailand or Singapore, somewhere, he gone. We're gonna have to go on a solo adventure. Now this is Portland, so I'm gonna take this bike for a ride and most likely this one will be stolen by the time we get back, but there's no other way to end that sentence. It's just how that might happen. Walk around to the Hero Tan M65X. I don't like the name, but other than that, this thing has incredible build quality. It's, it only took us, you know, a couple of minutes, maybe 10 minutes to, uh, to assemble from the factory. And uh, let me, well, I'll peel this guy off of here. Incredibly, incredibly good build quality, incredibly good uh, parts used on it. And these are like really name brand um, parts and, and just everything has a really nice um, fit and finish. Arguably much better than the drill bike. Not even arguably. 300 pound payload, so like me plus 100 pounds of stuff, which is really, really good. Super far range, over 100 mile range on this thing. It's got the cool pegs on the back, multi-speed. I think I've got this gearing set for top speed right now. Battery actually has keys, so you lock it in, you unlock it. So nobody can take my battery off now that I got the keys. It's got a tail light and a headlight, and it's got blinkers on the back for signaling, which is pretty slick. Disc brakes all around. I'm very, very happy with the, the build of this. Now, I will, I will tell you, I cheated a little bit. I have test driven this because I wanted to see what the top speed was. Uh, the seat is miles, miles ahead in seat technology over that seat right there. That thing is a taint destroyer. That thing is uh, whatever the opposite of that is. Power button's over here. Just hold down the power button for a second. My screen comes on, let me know what's going on. So that's my uh, miles driven. Odometer's still at zero miles per hour, how many watts are being used, and my mode. We can go up and down in modes. Two, three, four, five, six. I'm gonna go to the fastest. Uh, got my horn, electric horn, chill horn. Is that my blinkers here, right and left. And there's some sort of a throttle button that I haven't quite figured out exactly how it works. I think it makes it so I can't use the electric throttle. It might be like a safety for children's or something. So it's, oh, it's pedal assisted. I forgot about that. So. You start pedaling and right away the electric motor kicks in and I'm going I'm going 10 miles an hour oh through an intersection okay I gotta pay a little more attention hang on on sport mode 10 I'm gonna turn it down now on sport mode 7 the uh, the, the electric assist gets you going it's going pretty quick zero there's no electric assist so I got nothing I'll click it into one that's nice that's about where I'd like to be I want to put in a little effort here except for when we're top speeding so let's get a clear, uh, let's get a clear runway here. Looks good. So the suspension, it's got uh, shocks on the front and the rear. That's part of the reason I picked this thing up. Thought it'd be really fun to try and uh, burst this against an off-road motorcycle on an off-road path. Uh, it's chill, man. It's really nice. I could definitely see riding this for pretty long distances. And again, the seat, it's a good seat. I wish I had like a head-mounted GoPro for this, but I don't. So here we go. We're gonna see if we can, oh yeah. So throttles over here. I can just hit this and not pedal at all. And that is a wonderful feeling as well. And that's how we're gonna be going head to head against the drill bike. But to reach the top speed, I am gonna use the pedals because that'll help me go a little bit faster. I'm in the highest gear. I'm gonna floor it and pedal. And we'll see how fast we can go. Sixteen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 19, 20. That's about all I got. I think I saw 20.9 on there. The electric assist when you start pedaling and how it just starts flooring it, again, in the fastest mode, it's a little jarring. In the slower mode, it's not so jarring. But man, this is a freaking cool ride. In a city like mine, the biggest worry that I would have around something like this would be theft. 
This thing, as far as a product, is phenomenal. It ticks all the boxes for me. I would ride this around, I feel comfortable, I feel safe on it, I feel like I can control it, and I can be lazy on it and just throttle it, drive it around, or I can pedal it a little bit if I wanna get a little workout too. It ticks all the boxes for me. This is the best th This is the best version of this that I could imagine. I can't imagine putting anything else on here. Maybe a stereo, but you don't wanna be annoying to people around you. You got your ear earbuds. So this gets a 10 out of 10 review for me. So thanks Admotor for sending it. In, in a city like mine, my biggest worry here would be theft. This is such a nice product, it's such a nice thing. I imagine driving this around. Now, you could take your battery off or you obviously the battery is locked on there, but it isn't that heavy. If I was able to load it in the back of my truck, I mean, here, I'm picking it up, putting it down. Um, somebody could just pick this thing up, throw it in the back of their truck and, and be gone with it. So I'd put minimum in my city, three to four bike locks on this thing and have an absolutely amazing time. If you lived in like a beach city and you were going, like I saw a video of somebody uh, hauling a surfboard with one of those, that's like the coolest thing ever. If I could find time, I would love to do a long distance trip with this thing. I mean like 100 miles plus, I think that'd be really fun. I've always had a goal when I bought that bike to bike 100 miles, but there was no rules in my internal goal that I made for myself that I couldn't have a battery helping out. That set a pretty high bar. Could I drive it to the bar? Could I drive it around my neighborhood to go get food, go get lunch? Could I run and get groceries with it? Absolutely. Top speed and up, 20 miles an hour, that gets me there. I guess, you know what, if I, if I could change one thing, it'd be a top speed of 30 miles an hour, that way I could be in traffic, feeling comfortable, that if anybody's getting up behind me too much, that they, they, they should probably just slow down. So I would say 30 mile an hour top speed would be the only only way that I would improve on this product right here. Ad motor 10 out of 10. Thank you for uh, giving me a bike for a review. I'll put a link in the description. Now, the drill bike. My taint is already upset about this segment. Here's the one big thing that the drill bike has on the ad motor bike. Oh, it doesn't go backwards, so that's a big negative. Can't, can't go backwards. Um, it's lightweight, okay? It's a lot, lot lighter, which is gonna help us with speed. It doesn't have a kickstand, so. There's that. Batteries are easily replaceable. If you're like us and have enough of these batteries laying around in your shop, the range is technically infinite. Just put 15 batteries in your backpack. You're locked and loaded. Comfortability wise, I can tell you, I'm, I'm already not looking forward to this ride. I've got a nub on one side to rest my foot and a, a drill on the other. Ow, this is just, why? Oh, how am I gonna figure out my miles per hour? Well, I got a GPS speedometer on my phone. I'm gonna, okay, so I'm gonna set up a camera on the truck. Do a drive-by. Eight. Eight. Seven. Eight. Ten. Here we go. Fifteen. This is definitely a high-speed run there. Oh, I got brakes. So guys, here's the problem with the drill bike. I'm gonna try to film this and not die. My hand on the throttle here. It'll go slow without a lot of cutoff. I'll slowly increase the speed. There we go. 15! And it cuts off. Getting going a little faster each time. I'm learning how to throttle the, you know, feather the throttle a little bit, but really it's just getting pretty. I think it's unhappy with the, the high torque of my fat ass, too many teeth on that sprocket for my drill. But it does technically work, it's just eventually it decides not to work. It's definitely a high speed run there. Honestly, I think one of the biggest letdowns from this thing is the seating position, the damage to the scrot. But it, I have to say, it technically does work. It's just not very comfortable. I think this bike, oh God, is designed to be uh, taking a lot of your weight off with the pedals. But, yeah, you know, I am getting around. I'm going to travel in places. Oh God, brakes. Drill's not smoking. Oh, yep, that's, that's the smell of melting drill. Don't see anything visibly though, and honestly, the, the body of it's not even very hot. I've definitely got them hotter in the shop. So my review on the one day build drill bike, wouldn't recommend it. And I don't know how I ever used that seat. I must've had a much more firm tush back in the day. But um, 
Lots of things a drill bike can't do that the Hero 10 clearly can do. Only upside to this is it's way easier to load into the truck. Downside is I would not take this to the bar because I would not trust the drill to not melt slash stop throttling for me. So overall though, I think if I could get the torque limiting, let me just show you a really good example of the torque limit. If I just floor it, it'll just kind of, it just, it, it senses that it's too hard on the drill in some way or another. If Harbor Freight could teach me how to shut that off, I think we'd be in business. And I think this thing can easily hit the top speed of that. Cause I got up to 15 on this and the drill was not even close to full power. So it's possible. Also sprocketing down over here would put apply less torque on the drill and get us going a lot better. So I'm gonna give the drill bike about a three out of 10. Did not realize there was a person in this car that whole time, but whatever, glad they didn't steal the Hero 10. Three out of 10, hurts the taint, would not ride again. With a certain amount of upgrades, it could get to a five or six out of 10. Still not nearly as cool or reliable as the Hero 10. So Admotor wins this round of real products versus things Beast for Build can build in a day. Thanks so much for watching along, guys. Make sure to subscribe for more uh, really quality product reviews. If there's any other products you guys need me to review, you let me know. Peace! Come, come, come on.